Hello, today we'll be going over problem one of the May Long Challenge Code Chef coronavirus bread. So in this problem statement, there are n people numbered 1 through n, and there are n-spaced integers, x1, x2, all the way to xn. So with these integers, there's going to be one person starting off with the coronavirus, and anyone within two units from the person will have the virus. And we want to calculate the minimum amount of people infected and the maximum amount infected. For example, we can use the example input with n equal to 5, and we have 5 integers here. Let's say we pick one integer, 5. This person will have the coronavirus. That means anyone within two units from the person will have also have the virus. So it goes over here. 6 is 2 units within 5, so 6 gets the virus. It checks to the left of it. 2, however is not two units from it. Therefore, it will not get the virus. So therefore, everything else on this side, we can mark as safe. Now moving on to the right-hand side, we're back at six over here. We move up to the right again. We see seven is within two units. Therefore, seven has the virus. So therefore, we have three people in this scenario with the virus. Let's look at the same example. However, let's mark the number 2 with the virus. In this case, we go to the left. We see 1 is within 2 units of the virus, so 1 gets the virus. Now let's go to the right. However, 5 is not within 2 units, therefore it does not get the virus. And everything else to the right of it does not get the virus. Now let's go over the solution. So given back our initial test, what we really want to do is we want to start at a number, and then we want to check the right-hand side and the left-hand side. And we want to find out how many people are infected based on this information. So we want to go through every single number in this array, check both sides, and we'll keep a running counter for each time how many people are infected. And we'll keep doing this on and on until we can get our answer. Now let's go over how we're going to code this solution. So in the problem, we are given an integer t, which is the amount of test cases. And for each t, we are going to perform an operation. So in that operation, we're going to have our integer n, which is the number of people we're going to input into n. And then we're going to try go through the entire list of those n people. So inside here, we're going to be given an integer n, which is the number of people we're going to input into n. And we're going to create an array of size n, and we're going to input into that array as well. After we have inputted into our array, we want to go in and test each solution, or each possible person for the coronavirus. So inside here, we're going to have a few variables. We're going to create an integer counter equal to 0. What this counter is, is basically after we test that person, we want to count how many people that person has infected. Then from here, we want to create another integer testing. What this testing integer is, is basically just the integer we're going to test. From here, we want to write down two for loops. We're going to write down one for loop going towards the right-hand side, and one for loop going towards the left hand side. So for the for loop going throughout the right hand side, we want to start at the integer we're at and go towards the right. Inside here, we want to test the person next to the current person we're texting if that person is within two units away. If so, then we want to set the person we're testing equal to that person. And then we want to increment a counter by 1. So once we set this person, now we want to compare this person and the person two units after it, which is what this entire for loop does. Now for the left-hand side, what we can essentially do is that we can copy and paste this. However, we will need to reset testing. We will always need to reset testing equal to the original person we're testing. And we can reset it to the array at position i. 
keep in note that if the person is not within two units away from the previous person, then we can just break out because then we know that if someone is three units away from another person with coronavirus, that person will never be affected and nor will anyone after that be affected. So we can essentially just break out of the loop to say runtime. For the second portion, we can again have k equal to i, but instead we're going to go down towards the left hand side, so we're going to go from k i equal to i to k equal to zero. From here we want to do if r i position j plus 2 is less than or sorry greater than or equal to testing. The reason why we are doing this is because we want to check if the previous element, if we add 2 to that, will it be greater than or equal to testing, meaning if the distance between the two elements is less than or equal to 2. If so, then we want to do the same exact thing which we have done last time, set it equal to testing, and then we want to check to the left of that and carry on. And again, to say runtime, we can use our else break statement here for the same reason from before. And then after this, what we actually want to do is that we want to do counter minus minus. We want to subtract one from the counter. Why? Because you can essentially fix this in many different ways, but we start from k equal to i here, and we keep on adding counters, but then again, we start k equal to i here. So we count counter once here, and then we count it again here. Therefore, we have to minimize it by one. And now, we can actually create two variables up here. We can create one min equal to a large number, and one max equal to negative one. And the reason why is because we want to keep track of the minimum and maximum amount for counter. So what we can write is we can write min is equal to the minimum of counter and min. What this basically does is it picks a minimum number between counter and min. And starting min off as a very high number means that the first number will be written as min, and any number that comes across it that is lower than it will be rewritten as the new min. We can do the same thing for max. And then at the end, we just print out min max. Submitting this code does give us a check mark over here.